Number three, prayer driven. I, I just so appreciate the house, the Elam house. You guys are great people of prayer. Keep it up. Churches that grow are churches that prayer plays a very important part in who they are. And every time I've had a growing church, prayer has been a very important part of it. Four, they're believers in God's intervention. They believe in God's intervention. Now, there, there is a tendency for them to have a, a spirit of, of, uh, of, of excitement about their faith. And they expect things to happen. It's a spirit of expectancy. What is God going to do? And I just pray that God does something great with you guys. And I believe that God can perform a miracle. And you might say to me, Brother Wagner, I have never started anything in my life. Hallelujah, amen, God can do it. Miracles, the unexpected. God will perform the unexpected. And so if you get to that place and that point in your life that you can begin to say, I think that God's going to perform some miracles in my ministry, in my life. Now, I talked to the evangelism group, and I think some of you were in that, and I, I talked to them about miracles and and how God performs miracles. And in my own life, I could just give miracle after miracle after miracle after miracle of ways that God has led me and, and led. And it is always because of his goodness and his readiness to help us. And if you are people of prayer, and if you are people of the word, and if you have a belief system that allows you to believe that God does perform miracles, and you will be able to see his mighty hand at work. I will say no more from this because I don't want to bore you with just a bunch of miracles. That's <laughs> other things. Okay, an evangelical tradition. Now, evangelical means witnessing. Evangelical means witnessing. Now, we teach a class called evangelism here. And in this evangelism class, I'm going to be teaching people how to evangelize, how to go out and, and how to talk to people and how to tell people about Jesus. And, and churches that grow are churches that believe very much in evangelism, going out and talking to people. Now, I think that you ought to begin saying, God, how can I talk to somebody about the Lord? But Brother Wagner, my English is, is not very good. Yeah, no problem. Just if somebody bring, if they bring somebody into your presence, just talk to them. And the funny part about it is you say, well, well they, they might not understand English. English, not good. Yeah. Tell them about Jesus. And the, the, the words Jesus Christ are fascinating words. I don't know whether you realize the power behind these words. The other day I was speaking to my Iranian church and I said, if you just use the name Jesus Christ, you will be amazed as to what happens. Now, in, in America, and maybe in China, I don't know, but in America, in polite groups, you don't use the name Jesus Christ. You just don't. If I go to an opera or if I go to a uh, meeting or anything like that, I just don't. You don't use, you can see his name God, that's all right. Religion, oh, are you religious? Yeah, I'm religious, oh, that's all right. Are you a pastor? Yeah, I'm a pastor. You believe in God? Yeah, I believe, oh, that's wonderful. You can do that, that whole thing's okay. But not the name Jesus Christ, because as soon as you use the name Jesus Christ, that, that, that's a red flag, that, 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 what are you talking about? And so even if you talk to somebody and you say, oh, are you a student at Oliver? Yes, I am. And I so enjoy my school because I learn about Jesus Christ. Uh-huh, this person's a fanatic, you know. But the Bible says that the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that he is Lord, you know. So, so, so the name Jesus Christ is very, very important. I went to a big meeting one time that was given to us by the Archbishop of Salzburg. And we had Lutherans and Catholics and all these other people, and they were all there together, and it was a big supper. And we had, we had only about, I imagine, about 13 of us, 14 of us around this big table. 
And we can talk about anything, about the Second Vatican Council, about the Pope, about our churches, about these various things like that. And I thought, you know, it's very strange. Because here we are, religious people, and none of us mention the name of Jesus Christ. So I thought, well, I'm just going to, I'm going to do it. I'm going to, I'm going to mention about Jesus. So one time when I had the floor, and I said, you know, isn't it wonderful that we have all been brought together by Jesus Christ? They all looked at me like, how did this fanatic get in here? What's he trying to prove? What's he trying to say? And as soon as I mentioned that name, Jesus Christ, it brought a different, different situation. We had one man that, that in our Iranian church, I, he might come down here sometime, but he's, he's a tall man, has three members of his family, a daughter, a wife, and his wife's sister. There's four of them. And they started coming to our church. And so I went, and uh, I didn't know him very well. And so when I was preaching one night, after he'd been there just a couple of nights, and I said, now, if you want to accept Jesus Christ as your Savior, I'm going to ask you to do this. I'm going to ask you all to close your eyes. And I'm going to ask you that if you want to become a Christian, I want you to raise your hand. Raise your hand. Six people raised their hand. Four of them was his family. So I went to them afterwards and I said, now, are you, are you Christians? And they said, yes. I said, well, that's good. Uh, how long have you been Christians? About a year. Oh, really? Okay. Uh, how did you become a Christian? Well, we were in Tehran, Iran, and I was an English teacher, and my wife and her sister and daughter, they don't speak very good English, but we were there, and I started going to a Christian church with an Assyrian Christian, and over a couple of years, we became Christians, our whole family, all of us became Christians. But then the secret police found out <coughs> about us being Christians. And they went to my work, and they wanted me to get fired. And they went to my daughter's school, and they tried to get her kicked out of school. And they followed us, and they would go around, and they would come at nighttime and knock. And, and, and the persecution got worse and worse and worse. And, and because, you see, we were Muslims, and we became Christians from the Muslim faith. And in, in Iran, they kill you to do that. If you're already a Christian, that's all right, no problem. But if you were a Muslim and became a Christian, and so the Assyrians helped them get out of the country, and they came over to the United States, and they wound up in our area, and they came to church. And I talked to them, and they said, we want to be baptized. So about two weeks ago, I baptized them. Very nice. But then I mentioned the fact, I said, now, this week, what I want you to, oh, and then let me just say this, but they were having a very hard time. They didn't have any green card, they didn't have any permission to stay here, they didn't have any social security number, they were just here. They, they had permission to come in, but that was about all, but they didn't have anything. So they, they, were, they tried to get an apartment, and they couldn't get an apartment. Because when they went to get an apartment, they'd say, now, do you have any money? No. Do you have a social security number? No. Well, well, no, I'm sorry, you can't have our apartment. They couldn't get an apartment, they didn't have any clothes. All he had was the clothes on his back, and that's all. And, and we were helping him as a church. So I was preaching a sermon, and I said, what you need to do is you need to recognize the power of the name of Jesus Christ. And so I want all of you this week to use the name Jesus Christ in three conversations. Three conversations. Generally with somebody that's not a Christian. Just use the name Jesus Christ, okay? So the next week, we came back, and I said, did you do it? Any testimonies? He said, yes, I did, and this happened, and I did, and this happened. He raised his hand. He says, I did. He says, really? He says, yes. He said, I, I went to, to look at an apartment, and it was just the type of an apartment we wanted. And the man says, do you have any Social Security number? No. Do you have money to pay for caution? No. Do you have your permit to be here in, in this area? No. What do you have? I only have one thing. What's that? Jesus Christ. I'll give you the apartment. <laughs> and he got the apartment. And there is power in the name of Jesus Christ. You'd, you'd be surprised. And, and many people don't want to do it. But, but churches that are evangelical, I mean, yeah, other churches, 
that grow. Churches that are evangelical are the churches that grow. Okay? <clears throat> now, emphasis on discipleship. Oh, dear, 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 dear. I'll tell you what I might do. How many of you are in the evangelism class taught by Dr. Tallman? One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, I won't do it then. Because tomorrow, on Wednesday, I'm sorry about that class, that was my mistake, but Lily Dyker is going to speak about discipleship. He's going to talk about two excellent programs of discipleship. And discipleship is is something where what it is, is you disciple people. You have the job and the task to disciple people. Let me give you an illustration. You ready for this? Jesus said we are to win the world to Christ, right? Right. Okay. Uh, there was a... Uh, Mine? No, somebody else is good. So there was a man, and he was, I don't know if you ever heard this illustration or not, but if you heard it, you hear it twice. And he was a, a very wealthy man. He had a yacht in the Mediterranean Ocean. Well, the yacht sank, and he was about to drown. And a young man came by with a small boat and rescued him. And this wealthy man said, thank you so much. I, you, you saved my life. I want to give you a reward. And the young man said, I don't want anything. He goes, oh, I'm very wealthy. I, I can give you a nice reward. Let me give you a reward. The young man said, no. And the wealthy man said, I want to give you a reward. He said, OK. He said, what do you want? And the young man said, OK, what I want you to do is at the beginning of January, the 1st of January, which was coming up, give me one penny. One penny. The next day, double that. And give me two cents. The next day, double that and give me four cents. The next day, double that and give me eight cents. The next day, double that and give me 16 cents. Next day, double that and give me 32 cents. Next day, double that and give me 64. Next day, double that and give me my first dollar, $1.28. And do that until the end of the month, 31 days from January. The uh, wealthy man said, oh, I, I'm wealthier than that. Uh, I, I can give you more money than that. That's just too small. No, 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 that's all I want. So the wealthy man said, OK. You know how much money the man made at the end of the month? It's over $20 million. $20 million. Figure it out sometime. You, some of you that are mathematicians, figure it out. But it's, it's this multiplication. It's this multiplication. 